welcome back to another journey into the depths of Unreal Engine's PCG system. In this video I experimented with various approaches to procedurally generate a village. While researching for this project I encountered some challenges that didn't go as planned, however I was determined to share my experience with you. Although I don't have a final result to showcase, I gained valuable experience on integrating PCG graphs into a project and I will do exactly that in a follow-up series. According to YouTube statistics, you really enjoyed this type of content and I want to thank all of you for the positive feedback that I received. In the beginning, I wanted to use the marching squares algorithm to create my buildings. It uses a fixed grid of samples and fills the squares in between with one of 16 tiles depending on the samples in the corners. My idea was to create these different tiles as part of a 3D structure. I started with the create points as grid node and applied some noise. Then I used the point filter node which returns the set of points that meet a condition and also the inverse set. I colored them differently and to debug the color you have to use the PCG debug material color. Then I created a blueprint to execute inside the PCG graph, which will create the shapes for my buildings. Pretty soon I realized that this would be way easier to implement in C++, so I didn't want to continue this in blueprint. I also didn't want to introduce C++ to this project, so I got sidetracked a little bit and researched some other city building tools. I came across the Matrix Awakens experience and how they generated a huge city. They develop these complex systems where they have footprints for each building type and how they distribute them over available space. Also how they extrude the buildings and building the facade with this special grammar is impressive and I don't think anything like this would be possible with PCG graphs. They also talked about their road network which brought me to another cool tool. This city generator by Probable Train on itch.io can also generate a road network. Each of these points represent the direction where roads are leading to. I think this has some potential, for example you could create this so-called tensor field from a terrain and orient the directions to the normals. This could be possible with PCG graphs, but generating the roads had to be done outside the graph. Back in my project I tried my own approach to generate a road network but on a much smaller scale. Imagine a small village you pass through in an RPG. First I sampled some points inside of a spline with a spline sampler and filtered out some random points. I found this curve inside the spline sampler which allowed me to control the distribution of points based on the distance to the spline. Now I can prefer points closer to the center which gives me a better result for my use case. Then I implemented an algorithm to connect these points to a minimum spanning tree so every point is accessible. At this point, the output are all the edges as a custom struct with only the point indices. I used debug lines to check if it was working correctly. It wasn't, but I didn't care because I continued to experiment how to get this graph information into the PCG graph. My idea was to use another spline sampler. As input, it uses this polyline data, which sounded promising. I looked at the definition of this type and these functions caught my attention. The num segments would be the edge count of my graph. For the other functions, the first parameter is always a segment index, so I could implement them to return values based on the points that create an edge. For the segment length, I used the Euclidean distance, and for the get transform and get location, I interpolated the location. I left the curvature function to return zero. After two hours, I got my code to compile, and after two hours more, the editor finally stopped crashing when I connected my node to the sampler. Mm -hmm. 
but I still couldn't figure out how to get this to sample points on my craft and at this point I decided to quit and preserve what's left of my mental health. So after this exploration, what is my opinion on PCG? If you notice that a task you want to do just creates so much overhead with PCG graphs compared to Blueprint or C++, then maybe you shouldn't do it with PCG graphs. And so the best thing you could do with PCG graphs is integrate it into your pipeline and in the end you will always end up with a mixture of both so you have like complex systems created in Blueprint or C++ and then you have on the other side PCG graphs with, um, which can assist you with point sampling and whatever. But it was hard for me to create this video because I didn't come up with a final solution to my problems but I insisted on doing this video because I don't want to hide my mistakes and instead learn from them. And my first mistake was to go too deep into PCG graphs and I wanted to force myself to do things with PCG graphs. But instead maybe the solution was just to use Blueprint or C++ for more complex tasks and now another mistake would be how I approached this whole thing with going deep into C++ code for this new system. I know it's only an experimental feature and I want to stop going really deep into it until it's in a more stable state. Also I should have been clear on what I really wanted to achieve when diving into the code because I just ended up doing some random stuff and building on top of my garbage code base and it didn't work out in the end. In the future I want to first get an overview of what I want to achieve, then model and design my software and then start with the coding. Now I created a new project where I already finished what I started, I got my paths to work and they also adapt to the terrain. But there's a lot of things I want to go into deeper, for example now actually changing the terrain to the paths and yeah, building the rest of the village I guess. And if you're still here, thank you for watching and see you next time. Scheiße, ey.